Hey everybody, PlayStation's live at Paris Games Week 2017. We've got a huge show for you starting now. Welcome to PlayStation Live from Paris Games Week. We've got a big, big show for you here today. Lots to talk about, but first, I want to introduce our crew. Starting with you, and you've got a very familiar face. Really? Yes. Where have you seen me before? Maybe the internet. The internet. Yes. YouTube, perhaps. Perhaps. Well, you might have seen me on PlayStation Access in ah. my little YouTube cupboard. This is like <laughs> this is a real treat to be somewhere as glamorous as this. We've got like an actual desk. Lovely backdrop, like this has got all the bells and whistles. You know, we're not as big budget as this, are we? I've got my, I've got my PlayStation Access partner in crime with me as well. Why, hello, Holly. The Hi. amazing Holly Bennett. Yeah, they've, they've also let me out of the cupboard yes. for a while. This is <laughs> really have. exciting that we're allowed to have such a fancy, fancy arena. Uh, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, myself and Rob team up with uh, three others to make PlayStation Access, which is a YouTube channel. We're based in the UK, but we make content for everyone. Yep. And we literally cover Everything from the world of PlayStation. We eat, sleep, and breathe PlayStation. We What's do. coming up next for PlayStation Access? Well, anyone who follows me on Twitter probably knows I've just come back from Japan. Secret things. <laughs> oh, secret my. things. Uh, but it is a secret, actually. We can't tell you just yet what we were working on, but very soon those videos will be going it's live. It's going to be very exciting. It's soon. amazing. Yeah, I like Subscribe you. now. Yes. and. Uh, Rounding out our host here, Mr. Ramon Russell, the heartthrob of San Diego <laughs> studio. I'm so glad uh, you could join us, bud. I'm, I'm glad y'all could uh, have us. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, like Sid said, my name is Ramon Russell. I am from the MLB The Show development team back in San Diego. Speaking of them, shout out to everybody, all, all our development team back at home, cranking away on MLB The Show 18. We can't wait to tell you about it, but not today. Today, we're going to talk about all of this awesome content coming to PlayStation 4. That's right. Now, tell me a little bit about what you do with the MLB team. I know you do some streaming. Tell me a little bit about that. Right. So I do a little bit of everything. Most of the people <laughs> on our development teams, we wear many, many hats. Um, I'm a game designer sometimes. Other times, I'm a community guy. And other times, I'm here <laughs> in Paris with you guys on this stage, ready to see some really awesome content. And really <laughs> awesome content we are going to see starting any minute now. I want to tell you a little bit about what we've got lined up tonight. We're going to have 20 plus game updates. We're going to have seven game reveals. And we are going to be covering a wide, wide spectrum. That's AAA games. We're going to have independent big ones. We're going to have DLC updates for major titles, big sequels, Final Fantasy Yay. updates. I mean, my goodness <laughs> gracious. And then the PlayStation Media Showcase. And who knows what's going on there? That's just under an hour from now. We've got a lot to get to tonight. Mm -hmm. And I say, if it's okay with you guys, that we dive right in yeah, and we start off with a reveal. Now, this is a sequel to a game that a lot of people really love. And I want to show the first gameplay of that. And we're going to do that right now. After a thousand years, the Mask of Vengeance has manifested itself again. Who will protect the Mexiverse against the powers of evil? A hero with determination, who doesn't crack under pressure. With a statuesque poise of the old gods, Que baile el mariachi, todos queremos que baile el mariachi. 
ese. Pasito por aquí, pasito por allá, durito por delante, pasito por detrás. Guacamelee 2 kicking this off right. I love the first game. So excited to see the drink boxes back with a sequel. Coming to PS4 soonish. I love soon-ish. how precise they've soon-ish. been with the release date. Get getting us really excited. <laughs> soonish. There's a 99% chance it'll come out soonish. Soonish. And we are going to see some more gameplay of that now-ish. And uh, this game is looking super, there it is, super fact. polished. You saved that one. for You didn't show us that in rehearsal. Ah, uh, that's right. That I, I keep saving that one up. I kept that in my back pocket. So this game is looking super polished. And what we're seeing here, I believe these are the dimensional waves, yes. right? Yeah, and they allow you to solve puzzles and, and traverse obstacles. And you can see there, like, there's some hazards in, in the red dimension, and he's safe in the blue one. So it's going to add like a design. really interesting uh, angle to the puzzling. Now, if you played the original Guacamelee, you know it's got a robust combat system, and we're going to see a little bit of that here, juggling with those dimensional waves. But uh, you know, the 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 combat in this game is just so satisfying. You've got these luchador, uh, you know, sort of pro wrestling moves mixed up with sort of beat 'em up combat, and that color palette, rounding it all out. It looks gorgeous, doesn't it? It's even got me panicking now about like how much I'm gonna have to practice to get good at this. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I sucked badly at the first one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was we, not good at it. Chicken. <laughs> okay, so this is what, this is what, what we're here see. for. This is what chicken. we're here for. The chicken is back chicken and is better back. than ever. And this chicken has has seen a lot of refinement, a lot of new chicken <laughs> mechanics <laughs> on deck here for Guacamelee oh, 2 coming to want. PS4. And uh, this you is know, what they've been spending all their time on. I mean, the chicken. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Right? Wouldn't you? <laughs> So this chicken here uh, is is quite a quite a tough customer. We're going to yeah. see that here in a second. But the, right now we're going to see a new ability unlocked by I can only presume oh, the chicken oracle. Yeah, chicken, chicken oracle. oracle. <laughs> I, th- I swear that is a fried chicken shop somewhere in South <laughs> London. <laughs> if it's not, it certainly it, should it's be. Not. He's telling him, do not get turned into chicken nuggets today. That's it's right. Not today, son. I'm, you're going to learn some new abilities. Well, he isn't going to get turned into chicken, chicken nuggets shot. with this. Chicken Boom. shot. This is a new ability here for the chicken. This chicken is really uh, a can-do chicken. And this, <laughs> this chicken shot, the chicken glide, we're seeing it all here. Now, this chicken shot is also useful in combat. So this chicken is, is a uh, ferocious, ferocious fighter. Crazy uh, guacamole, too. I love that. I mean, you would not want to mess with this chicken. Look at no. it go. All chickens in video games are ferocious. I've learned that through my years of gaming. A chickens murderous nasty. force. That's yeah. right. <laughs> chickens are nasty. This has got to be the most lethal-looking chicken I've seen, though. <laughs> Seeing some first gameplay here at Guacamelee 2. And, uh, oh, is this co op? Is this co op? Yeah, I see. Co-op. So uh, I do have it on good authority from Drinkbox that there is four player co op throughout the entire game. We're seeing three of those four players right now. And this is the Mangrove Swamp level. I can't uh, wait for you guys to carry me. Grappling, <laughs> grappling hook mechanic here. Looking great. It really is. It's Guacamelee it 2. Like wow. Great start here for tonight. And you know something? Let's 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 just keep going. I, I got more. two more announcements, and we're gonna get to both of those right now.
those two great new games we just got to look at. Uh, I got to say the gardens between looking awesome. It's got that art style. It's got the time mechanics. Holly, what do you uh, what do you make of that? That is completely my type of game. <laughs> I'm I'm honestly taken with it. That's I have goosebumps. I have goosebumps every time that music drops. It's a beautiful single player narrative driven puzzle game. But there's no time pressure on the puzzles, and I really like that. No text or dialogue. The world tells you the story. One button to interact. A lovely game to get into. Genuinely in love with it. And it comes out late 2018. Nice. So the first trailer that we saw, that was the Hong Kong Massacre, developed by Vresky. Super stylistic trailer that looked insane. It had this, like, Max Payne, you know, Hotline, Hotline Miami, Miami yeah. a little Blade Runner vibe. Yeah, and yeah. you can expect that coming to the PlayStation 4 in 2018. Outstanding. So uh, we're going to keep moving here. we got a lot to get to. And frankly, we're running behind. So Loco Roco Remastered, it's out now on PS4. We know Loco Roco 2 Remastered. It's coming, and right now we're going to tell you when. And that was Loco 2, Loco, Roco 2 Remastered, and that's coming out December 9th, finally, now we know. Holly, I know this is a, a big one for you. Uh, yeah, my bathroom is actually decorated <laughs> with Loco Roco stickers. She's not even joking. I'm not actually <laughs> joking. Uh, I loved both Loco Roco games. Uh, my, PlayStation P my PlayStation Portable, my mm. PSP, played them nonstop. I love eating. And me and the Loco Roco games have that in common. <laughs> uh, if you've never played Loco Roco before, you play this lovely little creature, you roll around, you eat the flowers, you get bigger, you complete puzzles, sometimes you have to be a certain size to be able to complete them, and you sing to, you know, to wake up magical creatures. Uh, and it's utterly charming. I basically love Loco Roco. So Loco Roco 2, there's going to be new collectibles, new characters. It's in 4K on PlayStation 4 Pro. And pre-order start today. Outstanding. Today? Nice. So Holly, I know you're also a big fan of The Sims. Yeah. And uh, I think we've got an update on that one. Uh, yes, we do. We know The Sims 4 is coming to PS4 in November. Uh, I'm, like you said, a huge fan. So we have a first look at the expansions that are coming soon. So I say we just check it out. And that was The Sims 4. It's coming out November on PS4. And now I have a confession to make. I've actually never played a Sims game. Are you for real? Yes. 20 years almost. Shame. 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 Ring the bell. I will the say streets. I did get a chance to check it out on PS4. I spoke with the developer, and I think this might be the one for me. It's a time to dive in. So what they've done is they've basically tried to capture the entire Sims 4 experience from the PC. And instead of kind of reconstituting or boiling it down or doing something else with well, this is really the pure version and it's been just reworked with the UI in mind. It's going to have a much easier UI than we've seen. It's going to have all the free updates that they've rolled out to the PC. So that's toddlers, you got your pools, your careers, and uh, I have it on good authority that future PC free updates are also going to make the jump to PS4. So, uh, it's good yeah, to hear. good stuff. I think that's really exciting. Uh, I think it, what's really important here, it's not a reimagining, it's not reconstituted. I think I last played The Herbs on PS2, <laughs> and those games weren't like traditional Sims games, and that's really what people want. So, as Sid said, exact same 
same game, but with PS4 friendly UI. That's what really what you want. And of course, it's launching with all the fan favorites like City Living and Vampires, etc. Are you going to be cruel to your Sims? Holly? Yeah, probably. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it starts with about three hours of building a house, and then you just cruel to them for the rest of it. And lock them in a room with a refrigerator and the door to get out. Don't give my secrets away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hey, we're keeping a pretty quick pace on today's show, and we've got yet another game update to share with you right now. And Rob, I got the sense you were kind of fired up for this one. I am massively <laughs> excited about this one. When I first heard this was coming out, um, I literally was jumping for joy. Like, <laughs> and Rob doesn't jump for anything. No, not, not for that. anything. Um, so I believe we are going to have a little look at Tennis World Tour. Let's check out the trailer right now. And that was a new look at Tennis World Tour. It's coming to PS4 next year. Rob, yes. thoughts? I am super hyped for this. Yeah. Like, Holly can attest to this. I've been, I, I've been wanting a tennis game on PS4 for <laughs> forever. Yeah. Like it's been, it's been way too long since we've had a good, proper, deep tennis sim. Like the last one I really got stuck into was a Top Spin 4 on PS3. I played that so much, I was one trophy away from platinuming it. Um, and I understand some of the devs from Top Spin 4 are working on Tennis World Tour. That's true. And there's going to be, I think they've got uh, 30 licensed players so far. There's a full-on career mode, and it's really focused on the simulation of it as well. Um, so if you're after that deep, really sim-heavy tennis game, this is going to be the one for you. I think MLB has got, has got some competition oh, okay. now All right. in All right. the simulation okay. department. We'll fix this after the live stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll handle this after we're done. Well, uh, the excitement is palpable, and I want to just take a quick status check, just take a moment to catch our breath here. PlayStation's media showcase here at Paris Games Week is just about 30 minutes away. So you know that's going to have some good stuff, and we're going to be cutting live to that right after this program. And uh, we are running a bit behind. We've got a lot to get to. We've got a lot of announcements. We've got reveals, updates to share right here. And I want to kind of bring the conversation back to PlayStation VR because it's just ce celebrated its one-year birthday. Ah, oh, nice. happy. That's right. Uh, more than 100 games out there for PlayStation <laughs> VR. Tons more due for 2018. Ramon, what's your favorite PSVR game? Resident Evil. Yeah? <laughs> Scared the living crap out of me. Um, I played the first <laughs> few minutes regular on my television, then I popped on the PSVR. Completely different experience. Uh, I can't lie, I'm a scaredy cat, so I tried to get the shotgun and leave the house, but that didn't really work out. <laughs> Did you finish it? Um, we're not going to talk about that today. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Rob didn't either. So I no, I didn't either. Too it's, too, it's way too scary. But a game I really enjoyed, and I'm not even a massive Trekkie, yeah. but I really enjoy playing uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew. We played it in the PlayStation Access office, four of us all, all playing. Yeah. You each have a, like a different role on the bridge. Like I was the helmsman, Dave was the captain, <laughs> um, and you have to really coordinate to achieve your objectives. And it's like the ultimate wish fulfillment if you're a Star Trek fan, being able to be in Star Trek. It was just a really immersive experience. Exactly what PlayStation VR is good at. Amazing game. You literally did nothing but squabble. It was a video of you squabbling. Oh, didn't. Now, while you <laughs> like to sit, you know, quietly on the bridge, this is my jam. Give me a gun, give me giant alien spiders, and let me go to town <laughs> on them. Uh, I really enjoyed Farpoint. I, I think as well, it also had the aim controller. Uh, and I just had that feeling that if anyone should walk into a living room when I'm playing Farpoint, I might look slightly more badass while in my pajamas <laughs> because I've at least got the aim controller. Played it in co-op as well, which just means you and a friend can bicker while you try and take on the aliens. It's everything I wanted. Very exciting, but this is this is the highlight for me. This is super, <laughs> super hot VR. Oh, look at Sid you playing. Look at me. Playing that. Tiny Sid down there in the lower corner of your screen playing super hot VR. I loved it on PS4, but on, on and PlayStation VR, just so immersive. Like we're we're all cackling like goons, you know, as I do all of this. Like I'm blasting these guys, I'm throwing ashtrays at them, I'm throwing phones at them, um, dual wielding here like a like some sort of John Woo movie. It's just a riot. I mean, it's just pure fun, so much fun, and uh, 
that's sort of uh, some of the highlights for PlayStation VR that are out now. Enough about me, enough about us and our favorites. <laughs> it's time to take a look at the future of PlayStation VR because there's a lot of great games coming. We've got two of them to share with you right this minute, so let's check it out. It takes more than a fancy airship to make it in the arena. It takes a fearless captain and a steady crew. Join today and experience heart-stopping thrills, life or death battles, Fight alongside your heroes, or take them on. Wealth and glory can be yours. Do you have what it takes? That was two brand new games revealed for PlayStation VR, both scheduled for release in 2018. Now, looking at Bow to Blood, Rob, you're a Star Trek Bridge Crew fan. I kind of thought that might be kind of up your alley. I mean, for me, that's what PlayStation VR is amazing at, letting you experience things that you're never going to experience anywhere else. And so piloting a really high-tech airship in Bow to Blood, yes, that is probably right up my alley. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's a really unique game as well. It's set in this kind of fantasy reality TV show. We've got other contestants or enemies, and, and you could betray them or you can make allies with them. And also, it's procedurally generated as well. So every time you play Bow to Blood, you're going to be getting a completely new experience every time. But for me, it's just, you know, airships. Airships in VR. That's what it's about for me. Absolutely love it. There, uh, there's also uh, Megalith. We got a yeah. quick look at that one, Ramon. What do yeah, you think so that? Yeah, so that was the first trailer that we saw. So Megalith is actually an action-packed shooter. Yes, it's a hero shooter. shooter it's yeah. hero shooter. So easy. you're a titan trying to become a giant god, has destructible environments, you get free locomotion. It's also coming out in 2018, and the development team behind it are full of multiplayer veterans, and they're excited about what they can do in VR, which also makes all of us excited because with VR, you're going to have totally new experiences, loads of innovation, so we can't wait to see what everybody's going to do. Absolutely, and one of the great things about PlayStation VR is new experiences, but also putting a fresh perspective on familiar ones. So on that note, let's take a look at Ultra Wings VR coming to PSVR.
Ooh, that sprint vector, my goodness. I've got the vapors, I mean. What do you make of that, Holly? Oh, I loved it. It reminded me of a manga I used to be really into called Air Gear, just because of the rollerblading. Uh, as, a, as a game, it's already had tons of press attention. The devs have said, no, you can comfortably uh, run, okay. jump, climb, and fly, because it's very action-packed on its obstacle courses. Uh, and they have something called fluid locomotion. That is what they're fluid. coining for this. Fluid, fluid. indeed. And uh, we also just checked out Ultra Wings VR. That's also coming to PlayStation VR. Uh, it's an open world VR flight game, lots of courses and challenges. Interesting that you use the PS Moves to pilot the craft, a bunch of different crafts. Uh, they're saying 30 hours or so oh, to get wow. all the gold medals, okay. so That's robust cool. experience there. Uh, keeping it moving on the PlayStation VR front, uh, we actually do have an update to share right now around a favorite that was announced at E3. Now, if you watched the E3 PlayStation Media Showcase, you saw a quirky, delightful little game called Moss. Yay. Yes. And we're delighted to say that this one is actually coming out February 2018, so we can finally announce that. Ramon, you got a chance to play it. Yes, I did. The developers at Polyarch were so kind to send me a build that I got to play last week. I'm loving this game. So you control this mouse. Her name is Quill. She got this little sword, this awesome little, like, leaf thing on her arm, which is kind of cool. And what's really awesome about this game is the fact that you're using the analog sticks to control Quill, but when you're doing the puzzles in 3D space, you're actually using the motion controller on the DualShock 4 to grab so like things. things back. Yes, oh, like so you're actually cool. grabbing that block the there. Yep. Man, it looks amazing. I'm really So you get to control happens. both both the kind of the puzzles and Quill at the same time. It, exactly, at the exact same time. I really, really love this demo uh, that they sent me. I, this game is going to be so awesome. I can't wait to play it. And it's a dungeon crawler with a little mouse. It's a little tiny mouse named Quill. <laughs> so cute. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just this is one of the things I just love about VR is just new ways to interact. I mean, that's kind of, I think, deep down what we all look for in gaming and something that PlayStation VR are actually well positioned to provide. Ooh, Steve, combat, right? Here's, here's a first look at some of the combat. So you see Quill's going to take care of these little red beagles. So what's awesome is with the DualShock, you can freeze some of the enemies. So you're doing both? You're doing both at the same time. That's cool. And does like it feel that. like easy to do both at the same yeah, time? Yeah, I, I didn't have trouble at all controlling Quill or some of the puzzles at the same time. That's really nice. Just pull those steps there. up, turn them around, and control Quill to get her to run all the way up. Um, I would have played this nonstop if they'd sent me that demo. That's <laughs> awesome. So this is coming out February 2018. Pre-orders start very soon. Wow. That's right. Well, thank you for that hands-on report there, Ramon, on Moss. It's coming February 2018. Very excited about that one. Here's an update on another title that was announced for PlayStation VR at E3. That's Star Child. We've got a brand new trailer. And there's, well, I'll just leave it to the trailer. Let's check it out. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Bettner. I'm the founder and CEO at Playful. And I'm Kynan Pearson, the director of Star Child. Star Child is a cinematic platforming adventure game. You play as Spectra a traveler who crash lands on an alien planet during an important mission. You're about to see one of Spectre's unique abilities here today for the first time. We hope you enjoy this global debut of our new trailer. Brand new trailer for Star Child here. We just debuted, and uh, I gotta admit, guys, I'm a little puzzled by this unique ability. <laughs> Any ideas? It's like, what was that? With more like questions than yeah, I have more answers. Questions <laughs> and answers in it. In it looked like she was projecting herself out of her body and manipulating, like maybe astral projection. I want to say. Uh, Is that what it's good. called? All right. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Maybe telekinesis. Maybe yeah. yeah. 
something I guess we're just going to have to wait and see, huh? So uh, lots more to come here on the show. And we haven't even gotten to the PlayStation Media Showcase, by the way. So we are going to have a big Final Fantasy update for you at home. We're going to have a big update uh, for more VR. We're going to have more game announcements. And then, of course, that PlayStation Media Showcase, it's coming really, really soon. I want to check back before we move on, though, on one of the year's biggest PlayStation VR titles. Resi 7? Yes. Surely. <laughs> Resident Evil 7. I mean, Rob. they don't come bigger than Resi 7 on VR, I don't think. And the exciting news is there is new free DLC for Resi 7 coming in December. Free 99? Free 99 is free. <laughs> <laughs> um, even more exciting, it stars fan favorite Chris the Muscles Redfield. <laughs> Everyone loves Re Chris Redfield. He's just, I mean, it's going to be an awesome new take on the Resi 7 formula. And it's entirely playable in VR, again, just like the main Resi 7 game. Um, Redfield is like a, an action hero, so it's going to give a really different spin on, on the gameplay to Resi 7, I think. And we can have a look at the trailer for the Not A Hero DLC right now. Lucas, you'll pay for this. You're going to fail, and then you are going to die. I'm Lucas Baker. Right now, he's our only link to the connections. He's next on my list. We didn't get much from the first unit before we lost contact. Oh, Luke is a fucking psycho. I'm not sure what's worse, him or those things. We gotta get out of here. Oh, fuck. You gotta be kidding me. Fuck! 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 Get the thing off me! Please tell me what I'm looking at. I have no idea. It's something new. Exercise extreme caution. Christopher, stay away from that, see? Very impressive, my friend. Very impressive. Let's just see how impressive you really are. You're going to need to proceed with caution. Extreme caution. Oh, well, that's different. Like it haven't been since we got here. Brand new look at uh, Resident Evil 7's free Not a Hero DLC. Uh, Rob, I know you're a big fan of Resident Evil. I mean, it's, yeah, just, it's I mean, just one of the best of the year. It is. I think it's in my top three of the year. Yeah. I spent the majority of Resident Evil 7 hiding and or running away from things. I think now I'm playing as Chris Redfield, <laughs> I'm going to be punching stuff in the face. Right in the no, face. Gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Now, Ramon, I'm uh, told you're a big fan of Halloween. I most certainly am. I love Halloween. Uh, and actually, we have two PSVR games launching in time for Halloween. Halloween. Let's take a look at this spooky pair. I'll teach you the ways of our art.
Wow. Two uh, wildly different takes on the horror genre, I guess that's fair to say, right, Rob? Yeah, I mean, Stifled looks absolutely terrifying. <laughs> it also, like nothing I've ever seen either. From, uh, from the trailer, it looks like you have to kind of make noise to paint a picture of, of the world around you, but at the same time, that noise could attract things that you don't quite want to be attracting. Things I think we go bump in the yeah. night, maybe. <laughs> I think we should make Dave play it. <laughs> yeah. I think we should make Dave play it. He would absolutely love that game. If you're watching Dave, you're going to be playing Stifled very soon. Um, Dead Hungry also looked awesome though, Holly. Uh, Dead Hungry, as we've already learned through my love of Loco Roco, suits me just fine because yeah. I enjoy food. Uh, it's from Pixel Junk, so you know it's kind of going to be crazy. The idea is the zombies are really hungry, so you're making fast food and literally lobbing it at them to cure them, actually. Cure them. We're not trying to kill them right. or harm the zombies, we're trying to make them better. It just looks like Pixel Junk madness. Like, you can create different burgers by throwing things together. I'm, I'm in. Brain Throwing burgers. french fries at zombies. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm in. So that's two PlayStation VR games coming out tomorrow in time for Halloween, yeah. which is awesome. Um, there's another PlayStation VR game coming out very soon, League of War, and I believe we can see a trailer for that right now. That was League of War. Uh, I'll tell you, those two look like they were having the time of their lives on that couch. I mean, they were just, they were all <laughs> grins and smiles and horseplay. Uh, but is it RTS or tower defense or what is it, Ramon? It's, it's a little bit of both. So yeah? League of War, you basically you can grab a tank, pick it up and drop it on a battlefield and watch it go and blow stuff up. And who doesn't want to do that? So it's going to have a really, really nice single player campaign, tons of different generals to choose from. And I really like the use of the social screen. Very cool, very cool. So uh, is that it for PlayStation VR then? No, because you promised. Oh, yeah, you, that's right, that's you right. You promised me that I could talk about Monster of the Deep Final Fantasy 15. Unsurprising, I'm a massive Final Fantasy fan, and I'm really excited to get to show you a little bit more. I've got to play a bit of it, and I got to speak to Tabata-san recently as well with PlayStation Access. So, so here it is. Here it is. Now, before I talk about anything else, it is a standalone <coughs> game. So you don't need to own 15. It's not DLC. It's a standalone game for PlayStation VR. So for anyone who's played the game, you'll recognize some of the locations, but I have been told there's some new ones as well, which is quite exciting because it's a beautiful world. Now, just like it is in 15, it feels quite similar to playing the fishing in 15, almost like it sounds daft, but what the VR you know, would be for the fishing in 15. Uh, different tackles, baits, different rods and lines, put them all together to create the right rods for catching different fish in different locations at do, different times. Do they include a VR fish cleaning mini game? <laughs> Could you imagine? That would be have you ever, I don't know, so <laughs> awful. We've got chocobos now, Carl. Look, 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 look. look. Yeah, so anyone who played Final Fantasy XV's uh, online beta for comrades will recognize the character customization. It has incredible customization. Best RPG hair I have seen in a long time. That's and important. A, I'm you'd, a character expect, you'd expect nothing less from Final Fantasy. <laughs> I'm a character customization right? connoisseur, Rob. You know this. Yes, I The do. hair is beautiful. Uh, it also features uh, some of the characters you'll recognize from the game. You already saw Cindy. Now, when I spoke to Tabata-san, he told me that the, the whole team is in it. You know, Ignis, Noctis, Gladio, Prompto. Uh, and it actually takes place within the Final Fantasy 15 game. It takes place quite early on. You're basically going out, you meet the guys, and they're like, hey, why don't you come fishing with us? You can come and camp with us as well. Um, the character customization here is stunning. 
I think the biggest takeaway for this for me as a huge Final Fantasy fan is this VR game here put me into the world in a way that not even Final Fantasy XIV does. It really allows you, you're at the camp with the guys, you're able to steal food off Noctis's plate and he'd like try and bat you away. That was like the coolest thing in Final Fantasy XV, the camping. So to be in that is going to be like a massive wish fulfillment. It, it really was. Uh, it, it gave me something that fanfiction.net has never been able to. It really <laughs> put me into the world. Uh, but it gets better. I'm still allowed to talk about Final Fantasy XV. Oh my. More. There's more. There is. Uh, Final Fantasy XV episode Ignis. We know it's on the way. He is best boy. Do not at me. It's not a discussion. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to be able to show uh, a new trailer for that with some new details. And I can also reveal that the guest composer is Yasunori Matsuda of Chrono Trigger, which everyone knows. Final Fantasy and music go hand in hand. So I guess we should just get going. Please enjoy the Final Fantasy XV Ignis trailer. Listen well. A king cannot lead by standing still. A king pushes onward always, accepting the consequences and never looking back. thing from here. Let's make for the altar. Yeah. Well, well yeah. look who it is. What could one of his majesty's royal retainers be yeah. doing here of all places? Bloody hell. Join me. I can secure us a way to the king and the oracle. Yeah. Yeah. Free to live and love as you please. Oh, what good is a world that only ever lets you down? Why not end it all right here? I swore an oath to stand with Noct and keep him safe. Whatever it takes, I will protect him. Permit me to make a suggestion. Rather than follow this flotsam and float away to a watery grave, why not come with me? What do you say? And that was in Vector, actually a game that was announced right here at Paris Games Week about two years ago. Ramon, what did you make of that? Uh, a very awesome game in a tradition of like amplitude, frequency, a little thumper in there. It's awesome, and it is coming to PS4. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, I'm sorry, I'm taking back over. Because that <laughs> all right, all right, come on, all right. I can't stop talking about Get Final it out. Fantasy. No, I, I'm allowed to talk about Final Fantasy. No, it looks, <laughs> it looks incredible. And uh, for anybody who knows, it takes place in Altissia. I don't want to give too much away, but anyone who's played that game, Chapter 9, right? 
chapter nine. Uh, and it, it fills in basically what happens. And uh, I don't know if you saw it, the ring. You put the ring on. Let's not give away any spoilers. But we are finally going to get to find out, you know, a big thing about Ignis' story that until now has been a complete mystery. I mean, so it's going to be awesome. there's many, many people speculating on Tumblr, let's put it that way. So <laughs> who knows? I can only imagine, right? So uh, great show so far. I mean, I feel like I think we, we brought some significant updates here. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite moment, real quick to call it out? Uh, the Hong Kong massacre. They yeah. looked insane. I can't wait to play that. Yeah, what about you, Holly? Uh, I think it was Gardens earlier on. No, but sorry, I forgot the full name of it. But the yeah. Gardens Between. Between, yes. that's the one. That's Thank right. you. Um, so I know everyone thinks I'm going to say Farm Fantasy, <laughs> but Garden Between, I don't know. There's something about that. That's my jam. Hit good personal deep stories. Rob. It looks beautiful. I mean, for me, it's got to be it's got to be the tennis. Mm -hmm. Tennis World <laughs> Tour. That's I keep going on about it, but I've been, I've been waiting for a really deep good tennis game for so long so to have tennis world tour coming is is proper exciting and i was you know massively hyped for that got to say for me it's probably guacamole too yeah, so yeah. glad that we can get that out there it's coming soonish it looks gorgeous it's got the four player co-op throughout the entire uh, campaign it's got enhanced chicken mechanics Chicken, me I mean, the chicken is, <laughs> is, is, is right. the highlight of the show, right? That's why everyone's here. Finger licking good. Shot. I hope I don't get in trouble for saying that. that in. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so, hey, uh, we are almost out of time. That big PlayStation Media Showcase is right around the corner, and who's to say what's going to happen then? Uh, but we do still have two more games that we need to mm. announce. So uh, what do you guys think we should do about that? I think we should announce them. Should we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's actually a good idea. Plan. Yeah, that's my good grand plan. plan. So let's kick it off with the very first game we're going to be announcing, and we'll do that right now. And that was a first look at O-Ray. O-Ray, by the way, is how that's pronounced, <laughs> if you were wondering. Uh, really just magnificent, gorgeous looking game. And it's actually uh, coming out a little later today on PlayStation Store. Yeah. O-Ray out today. There you go. I've been saving I've that. I've been saving it. It's beautiful. Um, I thought it was incredible to look at. I got real Journey, Abzu-esque yeah, vibes yeah. from it. That's, it's totally, again, my kind of thing. I really believe with, with gaming, for me personally, I was very triple A only. I never really considered indie. And then I started adding that in, and I feel like I always compare it to having a balanced diet. Yeah. And it's like a for balanced every gaming diet. A balanced gaming diet. And these are the kind of games for me that balance it out. So in this particular game, you're exploring the world as a child that can turn into a dragon. You've already seen that in some of the B-roll. That's an easy sell, isn't it? I mean, it's yep. really dragon easy sell. Uh, the idea is there are these titans within the world, and they have very important jobs, but for some reason they've stopped doing their job. So you're trying to convince them to basically go back to work uh, by, by doing, you know, going through the world, solving puzzles, exploring. There are mysteries within the world for you to uncover as well. I think it's beautiful, and I'm so excited that it's actually going to be available you know, today, today. You, you love the look of this, then you can pick it up. Buy now. Mm. It does That's what I say. Doesn't it? Yeah, I absolutely mean, stunning. What you said about Journey and Abzu is, I think, on point. Mm. Really You're is. Getting those kind of vibes from it. I think it's just so nice to see you know, games like this as well coming out. And if, you know, if you're looking at this and you go, I don't play indies, I was the same as you. Please, just give one of them a go. Maybe you'll discover a whole new library of games What's wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with Nothing it at all. I mean, that is beautiful. So, hey, that was uh, O-Ray, and uh, I got to say, you know, I think we had a lot to talk about here tonight. Um, and I want to thank, actually, all the independent developers, all the publishers uh, who, who worked with us to put this show together. It's an honor for us to be able to debut and uh, your titles and to be able to provide all these meaningful updates and just exciting stuff all around. Uh, but I got to say, that PlayStation Media Showcase 
is right around the corner. Oh uh, I want to make a, a, a shout out though to everyone watching live. We've got a lot more to come after the showcase. If the showcase ends, there's more to come. We're going to dive deeper into all those games that you saw at PlayStation Showcase, all the new stuff you see there. Uh, are you excited, guys? Are you oh, excited? Yeah. I mean, massively excited. Yeah? That's what it's all about, it's, right? Yeah. These moments where we all come together, that the audience is already in, you can feel the electricity. I, I already know from people watching at home as well. Because we like, have absolutely I no idea. Oh, yeah, no, we're, we're, I'm actually, I we don't know, know anything. what we're about They to keep see. it under lock they and key here. Yeah. 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 It's like it could a be big, anything. It's like a big sporting event. Like, it is. the kind of nerves you feel, like, mm -hmm. ready to see something epic and amazing. Yeah, and I can't uh, wait. who knows? I mean, it's just, it's literally a couple of minutes from now. Really and we're going to be cutting to that live here in just, uh, just a couple of minutes. But first, uh, we do have one other thing we wanted to share with you. Now, this is one I've been dying to talk about all night long, but I've had to restrain myself. <laughs> Not, You've done yet, well. Not That's yet. right. You could talk about it now. Though. And just a handful of seconds from now, we're going to talk about and show uh, first details on a brand new game that's from an independent studio, and it's the... Uh, so it's a new title from a, a developer that's actually rather mm. celebrated. So I would suggest <laughs> that we cut to that now, and for all of you watching at home, enjoy the show. Samurai. You are a warrior. I can see that. You trained your whole life for this. And you have won battles that lesser men have called unwinnable, yes? But while you were sharpening your sword, do you know how I prepared for today? I 
I learned. I know your language. Your traditions. Your beliefs. Which villages to tame and... Which to burn? So I'll ask you once again, Samurai. Do you surrender? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jim Ryan. Wow, what a great way to open Paris Games Week. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's now five years since we launched PlayStation 4, and I still have the honor to unveil a brand new AAA game, the astonishing Ghost of Tsushima from Sucker Punch. And you know what? That's not the last surprise that you're about to get. You've seen the power of PlayStation 4 provides you not only with immersive storytelling, but also allows developers to fulfill their wildest dreams. The great news is that these developers are now extracting more and more power from the machine with increasingly spectacular results. That's why a single creative mind like Toby Fox can deliver one of the year's biggest hits in Undertale. Why a small studio like Ninja Theory can take you on a thrilling personal journey with AAA production values in Hellblade. And our own worldwide studios can bring alive Horizon Zero Dawn's breathtaking wilderness in dynamic 4K resolution and HDR. Furthermore, you can expect innovative new dimensions in gameplay as we continue to explore the possibilities of virtual reality. The bottom line is that there is so much power and potential packed into PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro that innovation will continue to accelerate and proliferate in the coming months and years. With more than 225 games offering graphical enhancements on PlayStation 4 Pro and more than 100 games compatible with PlayStation VR, PlayStation is already the best place to play. As we will show you tonight, it's thrilling to think there's even more to come. While we continue to focus on bringing you the games you love, we're also focused on expanding the PlayStation community. We're excited about innovation like PlayLink, highly social, easy to play, localized, and fun. We've been thrilled with the success of That's You with over 3 million downloads to date, and see more social and family-orientated games give us an opportunity to expand our reach and amplify our mission to be the best place to play. The past 20 years have seen trends come and trends go. We're still here, stronger than ever, and well-positioned for the future. The ecosystem of today will be more powerful, more engaging, and more immersive tomorrow. The maturity of the gaming industry is an incredible asset to a dynamic and exciting future for PlayStation. Ultimately, words mean little. Action is everything, and the proof is in the journey into the extraordinary worlds of new titles and new experiences that you're about to enjoy. I think you'll agree that the best place to play just keeps getting better. So let's take a look at some of the most sought-after, exclusive content our industry has ever seen.
watching you, Erica. I've been watching you for a very long time. They've been watching you too. They've been waiting very patiently, and now they've come for you. Just remember. Don't break the seal. If you break the seal, I can't protect you. Come to see what's biting, have you? My name is Ryan Marks. I left London to be a soldier. But then they came for my family. Now I'm back, and everything just got a little bit complicated. I'm a professional soldier. Don't take bad man for a joker. I don't want to do man over, but I'm raw getting closer and closer. Get shit resolved, I'm quick. No glamouring hits, just glamouring grit. I'm on my ting, won't quit. I'm a real bad man, I get a bad man hit. I'm coming for you. I get this result. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Start talking, you're fucking dead. Wait, listen. It was all his idea. He wanted... Fuck me. Today a legend is born. Ready for vengeance, ready for war. Ready for anything, ready for more. My English gang's my telling I'm coming for you. I get this result. I'm coming for you. Show no regrets. I'm coming for you.
As PlayStation VR marks its first year in the market, it's really moving to see how development teams are starting to see the raw power of this game-changing technology. We're witnessing the birth of new styles of gaming, storytelling, and visceral experiences. The future of PlayStation VR is extremely bright, and we look forward to unveiling more in the near future. One of the consistent factors in our success over the four generations of consoles has been the unwavering support of our partners. We were delighted to feature a massive amount of indie and VR content in the pre-show. And now it's time to showcase six games, all of which offer features and benefits unique to PlayStation from some of our most valued partners, all of whom we've been working with from the very beginning. Let's start with a new trailer from our friends at Ubisoft. It's a beautiful sunny weekend in Hope County. How will you be spending your time outdoors? Cadetan's <laughs> gate is still causing trouble. Imagine me and you and you and me. No matter how the dust the dust, it has to be the only one for me. Guardian, what I'm about to tell you stays between us. While we have been fighting, an ancient gate has opened on Mercury, and an army of past and future machines amasses. They intend to reshape the universe in their image. But there is one who has glimpsed this dark future. He was my mentor, Osiris, the most notorious guardian in Vanguard history. Once, his dangerous ideas nearly destroyed us, and he was banished. Now he has returned, but will he be a powerful ally, or bring us death? You are the one thing they have not foreseen. Go to Mercury, and find Osiris. Time is not on our side.
Carrington bonus map. Thank you to all our partners. It's a real privilege to have your titles on our platform. A key differentiator for PlayStation is its best-in-class development teams that make up Worldwide Studios. We have a great lineup of exclusive games coming soon, only on PlayStation 4. Let's take a look. With Fisk behind bars, what's next? The city safer than ever. Maybe Peter Parker can have more to life. Are you in trouble? Do you need money? No, no. I mean, I mean I'm a little behind on my rent, but no, I'm, I'm fine. Take care of this place. It represents the best part of me. Smiles. He's gonna be helping out around here for acts of extraordinary bravery. I'm the one who kept order in this city! What is this? Devil's breath. Your city and everything you care about will be destroyed. People will beg you for help, but you won't be able to save them. Get more backup.
Maybe the city needs our friend more than you think. two weeks, so the place is a mess. You do the housework, the washing, you cook the meals. That's Alice. You look after her. Homework, bath, all that crap. Got it? Right away, Todd. Aren't you going to school today? I'm sure we used to be friends before I was reset. Maybe we can be friends again. Mom made them sound more dangerous than that. Then do not drop your guard. Come. Amazing! 
Follow me. Yes, sir! That doesn't sound like a soul eater. What do you think it is? We shall see, boy. Hopefully, we've made one thing clear to you tonight. It's a great time to be a gamer. To close the show, let's have the first in-depth look at a much-anticipated and exclusive title. From everyone at PlayStation, thank you for your continued support. Good night.
they are nested with sin. Free them that they may know my the other apostate. Clip her wings. She's one of them. Lev. your bags.
Don't touch that dial. Don't touch. Don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more. We're going to get a behind-the-scenes look at a lot of those new games that were just announced today. So stay right there. Very quick, our panel of, of hosts here. What did you think? God of War. Last of Us 2. Oh, my. <laughs> Yo, every developer out there, AAA or indie, Big hats off to you guys for providing that content for this show for this showcase. That was insane. Thank you so very much. I'm done. Well said, Holly. What are you thinking? Uh, despite being knocked over by the Detroit demo, I have to say, Concrete Genie, mouth was open the whole time. Utterly charmed. I just want to run around that world. I want to create. I want to bring things to life. That's my jam. That's a hundred. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Rob, what I've got thinking? to say, seeing Shadow of the Colossus Ooh. gameplay running, uh, you know, it looked beautiful when it came out on PS2. It still looks beautiful now, but seeing that on PS4 just looks incredible. It's one of my favorite games of all time and on we, any platform. And, and, and well deserved. We've got yeah. Blue Point on that one, doing what is sure to be a world yeah. class uh, remaster. I'm going to have to go with Sucker Punch. I mean, we finally heard more <laughs> about we heard from Sucker Punch. What yeah. have they been up to? <laughs> now we know it's Ghost of Tsushima, and actually. We've got a bunch of in-depth developer interviews coming up right now, and let's start with hearing from Sucker Punch on Ghost of Tsushima. So in 2014, we came out with Second Son, and about six, seven months later, we came out with First Light. And then about a year from that, PS4 Pro was starting to come out. So we wanted to support that with Second Son and Fetch with First Light and all the cool laser bullets that come with that. But behind the scenes, what we were really working on was trying to figure out how do we make a new game? Like, if we were going to depart from Infamous, like, it's got to be awesome, and, and what is the process to get there? When we were looking at our next project, we wanted to stay open world because we're giving authority power to the player. And we didn't want to walk away from that. We think it's integral to modern gaming that players are in charge. And I think in true Sucker Punch fashion, we answered that with, hey, what does everybody at the studio think? And we had about, I believe it was 70, 72 pitches, you know, 72 ideas that kind of all formed up from various corners of the studio. And then we try to coagulate that into like one you know, idea. Turns out these things are really, really hard. We thought a lot about open world games and what makes some open world games just beautiful and great. And uh, we kind of settled on wanting to have a clear fantasy as the player. Like, who, who are you? What are you gonna be doing in the game? And then we came upon this game idea, which is, awesomely simple, right? To hear about it is to want to play it. Who doesn't want to go to feudal Japan? Who doesn't want to be a samurai with a katana on their hip, right? When you tell somebody that you get to play as a samurai, you don't really have to say anything else. You just say that fantasy, and, and, and everybody just builds a list of scenarios and narratives and gameplay scenes that, they, that you might get to play in that. When we hit upon the Mongol invasion, of, of Tsushima of 1274, it all clicked. Suddenly you knew who the heroes were, who the villains were, what the stakes were for the world, and you had a video game. I will ask you once again, Samurai. Do you surrender? Ghost of Tsushima is a uh, action stealth adventure game uh, where you play a samurai in feudal Japan and we're taking inspiration from the historical point in time where the Mongol army invaded the island of Tsushima. All those locations are in engine, they're in the world. That's the place that you're gonna defend, a huge island filled with a lot of different places, towns, people. There's so much to learn, there's so much to see. I think player choice in this game will mean something very different than other games we've met in the past. We really want you to have that choice of, hey, that cool bamboo forest over there, I really want to check it out. I want to head in that direction and I want to you know, see what it is. There's no waypoint. There's no thing that says, go here and look at this bamboo forest. And we just hopefully are presenting something that's beautiful and exotic that's different than the current place that you might be in. And that will come at a world choice, right? Like that's your adventure choice. Like it's like, where do I want to go? In Infamous, we let you explore powers. In this game, we let you explore what it is to be a samurai inside of this enormous landscape of medieval Japan. You know, here at the studio, sometimes we talk about the world as a character. And I think that even um, in Second Son, we pushed really hard to make the flavors of the world come alive. There's all these other elements that make you remember what it really felt like to be a tourist in this place. And we're going to do the same thing for this game, starting with some of the shots you see in the trailer. We 
we've been working on this game for you know, three and a half years, and it's exciting to be at a spot where we're finally able to share with the world what we've been working on. And now it's just up to us to actually deliver this fantasy, this wonderful fantasy about being a samurai in feudal Japan. One of the boldest visions we saw was from a team called Pixel Opus. Let's delve deeper into the magical world of Concrete Genie. The core cool idea for Concrete Genie actually came from a brainstorming process that we executed with the team where one of our artists, Ashwin, created a piece of artwork that illustrated a character being bullied. And he overcame that by creating artwork within the wall. So Concrete Genie is a game about a boy who can bring his paintings to life. So all of our gameplay and our unique features are about having fun with paint and using the DualShock 4 to create amazing landscapes, but also make creatures that you can bring to life. And they have all kinds of interesting quirks and personalities and abilities depending on how you paint them. The goal is to make anyone feel like they could be an artist. It's a big part of our player fantasy. It's effortless and it's full of joy. And a lot of our progression mechanics in the game are about learning these new techniques for you to play around with and have a lot of fun with. We're really lucky in that we wanted to use the power and the tech of the PlayStation 4 to make the drawings come to life within the walls. And we've developed an awful lot of, of technology as well as design mechanics to help anybody make something as effortlessly as possible in this game. I, for example, can't draw in real life, but in this game, I feel like I can. So whatever the marks that you make with the DualShock as you gesture around in this world, we take that mark that you've made and we embellish it and we grow it into, into something really beautiful. I'm hoping that people get that same feeling that they did when they were kids and sort of drew with a crayon for the first time or looked at, a, at the first illustration in a children's book. I really hope that people feel that when they're creating their own artwork. We can animate and bring to life these incredible creatures who all have their own AI and their own distinct look and they're all completely unique to each player. It's not just about creating artwork. It really is quite a bit more. It's about the adventure also. One of the things that we learned from making Entwined was that if we're going to invest our heart and soul in, in making a game that has a message um, to it, we wanted to make sure that with this game, we put it into a structure that people were going to have a lot easier time getting into. And so we decided to invest in making a third-person action adventure because that's a platform that we love. Um, we love those type of games. And then all of our amazing kind of painting gameplay sits on top of that base. Entwine was a perfect first project for the team. What we learned from Entwine is that we wanted to continue to make games that, that have an emotional connection with the player, you know, games that, that have heart. And that's sort of one of our internal mandates is that we make sure that we have games that resonate with people from an emotional point of view. That's been important for Concrete Genie. There's something really just intuitively fantastic about making these marks in the world and seeing them come to life as well. I'd say the main thing we hope people will feel is joy. I feel as an artist this, this game is really a, a dream come true because I think uh, if you're a young person drawing in the back of the classroom or, or sketching and uh, we really give you the ability to have that same feeling that you do as a kid but um, have your drawings come to life. I mean that's, that's um, is an absolute dream come true. Among the many titles PlayStation announced at Paris Games Week was one that stood out for its innovative storytelling. It's called Erica. Let's take a closer look. Games are typically empowerment fantasies about that external conflict, and we're putting you in the mind of, of someone who is a living, breathing person. And so the decisions you're making aren't about high score. It's not about avoiding a game over. It's literally about the soul of this character and wanting to preserve that and wanting to do what's right for Erica. 
I think if you're not familiar with games, the easiest way to pitch this would be to say it was like an interactive film. But we think it's, it kind of doesn't deserve to be like a subsidiary of like an existing sort of medium. It really feels like it's its own sort of thing between something like film and games. So we don't want to say too much right now about the story, but ultimately this is Erica's story and you are guiding it. And the heart of that story kickstarts with a traumatic childhood event, which haunts her until her adulthood. She's contacted by an old family friend who believes that in her mind somewhere is the key to the identity of a killer that's on the loose. But then what starts happening is that the killer comes into the picture as well and starts to contact Erica. And then you're stuck between these two perspectives, these two sides of the same coin, and not really knowing who is the one to trust. And the choices you make end up sort of creating a bias towards one or the other. And ultimately, these pile up to give you this sort of this tough choice towards the climax of the game as to what you think the truth really is. Originally, we designed it as a very solo, intimate experience where it's just you and Erica and her world. When we started playtesting it, we realized that people would just sit on the sofa alongside their friends and they start getting into arguments about what's the right thing to do. And they can just watch it without having to understand what the game mechanics are at all because the cinematic experience is so seamless. It feels like something you just watch on TV. It really works as like a backseat gaming experience, which is something I've, that's always been like an interesting subject to me. I've been watching you, Erica. Whether you're playing Erica or you're watching it almost passively and you're just in a sort of a social situation, it generally feels like watching a Hollywood film with the same pace and the same production value and that sort of flow that you're, being, you're familiar with after like a hundred years of filmmaking. What it allows you to do that film doesn't is make you an active participant in that. And that means you can feel emotions that you haven't felt when you're watching a film, like guilt or shame or pride, these things, because you're involved with the decisions. So the way it's structured is very much like a sort of a typical feature film. It's always moving forward. It's always seamless transitions. And you're pushing it forward with the words that you choose for Erica to speak. And she won't speak unless you choose for her to speak. It's not like you're only involved some of the time. You really are in control of this experience. You're interacting every like 15 to 20 seconds, which creates this like great gameplay flow. But we don't want it to just be about dialogue. It's also about touching the world. And so by using your smartphone and Playlink, you can do something like wiping condensation off of a window and peering through to the other side or just wiping a tear from somebody's cheek. There's even like sensitivity in this world, so like the speed that you do these things. If you open a door fast, it makes too loud a creak, you'll see Erica react to the fact that maybe she's made too much noise and she should be quiet. It's about allowing your actions to be louder than words, essentially. So in film they say, don't say it, you've got to show it. So in games, it's, it's not just showing it, but it's allowing you to express it with the choices you make through touch. The thing that excites me mostly is that I really hope Erica is a star of something new because we had to throw out the rule book on how we develop games. What Erica's going to give us is the foundation for what could be endless amounts of stories for years to come. One of Paris Games Week's biggest blockbusters is coming to PlayStation VR. It's called Blood and Truth. I had a chance to sit down with the team at London Studio to learn more. One of the downsides of action movies is you're just watching somebody's experience on a small screen. What Blood and Truth lets you do is put on a VR headset and kind of immerse yourself in a story in a way that you could never have done before. Imagine your favorite parts of your favorite action movies. You actually get to be in that. London Studio worked on VR Worlds, and one of the more popular parts of that was a game called The London Heist. It had action, it had drama, it had gunplay, but it was very much like a demo. What we wanted to do is take that, turn it into a full game. So everything that was in The London Heist, the object interactions, lighting cigars, shootouts, we want to take it to, well, beyond the next degree. Dial it up to 11 and just really kind of amp up the action. London Heist was kind of like our love letter to the classic Cockney gangster movies. When we started the project of Blood and Truth, our inspiration was way more kind of classic action movies. In Hollywood terms, it's very much a, a big blockbuster. The London Heist was, it, it, it was static, apart from in the van. Now you can move, you can move and shoot, you can dual wield, you can reload as you're doing it. You can plant C4 while you're taking enemies out. You can crawl through vents. Pretty much anything you've seen in an action movie, we've either considered it or we're doing it. 
When you're playing the game in VR, it's more immersive than any other first person shooter. You get to feel like you're there. And when you're kind of hunkered down and you're under fire and there's grenades flying in, you feel the intensity and pressure in a way that no other game lets you do. Someone throws a grenade at you, you just pick it up, throw it straight back. You really feel like the action here, right? And the moving adds to it in a way that the heist never did, which is it adds a level of tacticalness to the game, particularly with the strafing between points as well. So you kind of, you're in the middle of a firefight and you can dodge around. You can actually start peeking around corners and stuff in a way that you just can't do in a normal game. Blood and Truth definitely immerses you in a way that no other action game has done before. It makes you really feel like an action hero. And I think part of the reason for that and reinforces that is the movements you're doing, you know, in your head, you know, you just feel like you're immersed in that game world. When you get your clip and you smash it into the gun, that it just, it just works and it feels right. We've got like fancy reloads you can do, like gun tricks. I mean, there's people in the studio who can throw clips in the air and catch them. So as you get better at the game, it kind of grows with you. PSVR has just celebrated its first birthday. We've seen some amazing games come out in that first year. I think for us, you know, Blood and Truth shows the potential of what could be coming next. I think these bigger, more blockbuster titles that really push the boundaries of what it is to kind of be in VR. It's like a compendium of all the best bits of all the action films and games that we love to play and we just put them all together. We've only shown one location. We've got a load more levels that kind of showcase the glamour and grit of modern day London. We're just scratching the surface over kind of what we've got and what we're working on behind the scenes. And there's definitely more to come in the future. A little earlier, we got a new look at The Last of Us Part Two. Naughty Dog's not sharing much for now, but I was able to pry a few more details out of creative director Neil Druckmann. Let's take a look. It's been almost a year since we announced Last of Us Part Two. It's been hard being quiet for so long, but you know, in the meantime, we've put out a little game called Uncharted The Lost Legacy. With that finally out there and people playing it and enjoying it, the entire studio is now on The Last of Us Part II. We're in full production. Every game leverages all of what we learned and all the technology we've built on the previous titles. So this is definitely using all the tech, all the engine improvements we made of Uncharted 4, and now we've had several years to build whole new tech to increase the fidelity even further of our game. So this is the next evolution of our Naughty Dog engine, as far as lighting, as far as our character pipeline, how we do muscle deformation, rain effects, even like our facial performance is this whole new rig and whole new pipeline so we can get an even truer performance to what we're capturing on stage. And now we want to give the fans a little something more, lifting the curtain a little bit on the story for The Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> Yara. Where is the other apostate? Clip her wings. The Last of Us, at its heart, is about Joel and Ellie and their journey, but it's also an ensemble piece with all these other characters fitting into that theme. And this time, we wanted to focus on some of the other really important characters. You know, last year at the PlayStation Experience, we talked about the theme of hate and how much of this story revolves around that. This, you could see in a lot of ways, speaks to that. So instead of giving you an adjacent puzzle piece about Ellie and Joel's journey, we want to go somewhere else and give you some, something else and see how people make the connections. But as far as who these characters are, what their conflict is, where this takes place, when this takes place, um, we're gonna leave it up to the fans for now.